issue or something like that okay so please make it your responsibility that you let me know if the recording is not done okay uh i didn't want to start the recording someone else to start the recording yes sir maine kar di start okay okay good 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 uh i don't know uh, sometimes i directly get the recording video of, i mean the link on my email sometimes i don't get it sometimes some student is sharing me, with me so again i don't understand the dynamics here that how is it how is it works but suppose if some 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 of you student uh, get the message or the email for the recording uh, link okay then please forward it to me so that i will uh, i will put it on the google classroom so that everybody can watch it okay 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 uh So Walid Jamshed is here. Uh, can you hear me, Walid? I don't know. I think uh, maybe he cannot hear us. Anyways. Uh, since uh, he is your class representative or class leader, so I will be in communication with him regarding the quiz again, and I will put the question on um, for 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 finalizing the time. I will put a question on the Google Classroom today, and I request all of you to to respond to it so that I know that everybody is okay with that specific time or not. Okay. So let me share the screen. Okay, so can you see the uh, the mm, my computer screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So let me open our chapter number three, which we were covering. Uh, we'll come to this point four. From here, we need to start. Okay, I need to ask. Did you go through the material? Did you find any difficulty before this slide? Is there anything from the previous lectures that you do not understand? Any concept? Any numerical methodology? You can ask, inshallah, and respond. <clears throat> Anybody have any issues? So far, all the material is clear. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Still, once again, I repeat it again and again, but it's okay to repeat again and again that in case if you feel difficulty in any of the material, something you do not understand, don't be shy asking me the question, okay? Inshallah, I will respond to you. It's my responsibility to respond to you, to make you understand the material, okay? And uh, don't be shy that you, you, you might ask uh, a stupid question, okay? You are students, you are allowed to ask, okay? You were calling Walid. my name. Uh, Walid Jamshed? Yes, sir. Okay. I just wanted to communicate with you. So you are the class leader or class representative for this yes, session, right? Yes, somewhat, yes. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. So yeah. anyways, uh, I, will, uh, I will be in contact with you. We need to finalize uh, a time and date for the first quiz. Section sure. 1 says that uh, uh, Friday at 10 to 12. In the mm -hmm. morning is okay for them, but I don't know about your section. So can you communicate with all the students and let me know on WhatsApp that okay is it is this time okay for you guys or not? Okay, sir, because there is an EDC uh, ECD class uh, on mm -hmm. Friday from ten to twelve, so there might okay. be a class. Okay, so that means, that, that, that means we, yeah. okay, khalas. That means that means we need some other time. Okay, yeah. from from section A, the the class representative is the server. Do you know him? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, uh, and you are the class representative of Section B. Can you two guys communicate with each other and come up with a time, and you let me know so that we will have the quiz on that time, which is sure. okay for both Section A and Section B. Okay. Yes, sir. So uh, my request is that uh, by the end of today or by tomorrow, I need to have the time. Okay, from 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 both. Of you, okay. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, regarding uh, this lecture, uh, chapter number three, we were discussing. Uh, do you uh, do you have any questions so far before anything that you don't understand? Anything you want to ask? Okay, once again, I'm telling you, you can ask me on the class, in the class, you can ask me on the group, you can ask me personally on WhatsApp the way you want, the way you feel comfortable. Okay, so my objective is that you understand the material as well as possible. Okay, the second thing is that uh, I have uploaded almost all the material which was required to be uploaded for the course of thermodynamics on the Google Classroom uh, till the last lecture. Okay, one of the student uh, told me that he was not able to open the supporting animations file. So what I did is that I opened the file on my computer, okay, and then I took the snapshot or screenshot of or what do you say, the, the video. I took a small video of those animations and then I uploaded those videos as the video file in the Google Classroom against each chapter. So even if you are not able to open the uh, the supporting animations, no problem. Those supporting animations has been uploaded as video file in your Google Classroom against all chapters, okay? But anyways, these supporting animations or the practice problems I have given, these are all the things to enhance your knowledge in the college, uh, in this course, okay? So it's not compulsory to go through those videos. It's not compulsory to go through the practice problems. The compulsory thing is your lecture slides, which I cover with you in the class, okay? So if you cover the lecture slides, inshallah, very well, I hope that you will you will have no problem in scoring good grade in the, in the course, okay? The rest of the material which I upload is just for your own knowledge, for your own understanding, for better understanding, for, for more practice if you want to go through it, if you want to excel in this. In, in this subject, okay? But none of, thing, none of those things are compulsory. The compulsory is just the lecture slides, which I cover with you in the class. Is it okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, so uh, if, if nobody have any question from, from this chapter be before, so let's start with this example, example four. Uh, consider a Consider a closed, rigid container of water. Okay, when, I, when, when it is written here, consider closed. So what do we mean by closed? Can anybody tell? It's an isolated, sir. Uh, no, isolated has a different definition. Can somebody tell me what is the difference between closed and isolated system? Okay, let me so tell you. Closed would mean that there isn't any flow of energy? Uh, no. When we say closed, it means that mass cannot go in and out, but energy can still go in and out. But when we say isolated, that means we are putting restriction on both mass and energy. Neither mass can go in and out, nor energy can go in and out. You understand it? Yes, sir. So when yes. it is said, cons consider a closed rigid container of water. So close means energy can go in and out, but mass cannot. Okay. 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 So consider a closed rigid container of water. Now there is another word here, rigid. What does the rigid means? I explained to you before in one of the lecture. It does not change its shape. Yes, it does not change shape. So in other words, it does not change volume. So volume remains constant, okay? This is the, these are two very valuable information. You're gonna see that with this information, you'll be able to solve the problem properly. Without this information, you will not be able to solve the problem properly, okay? So these are not just random words written. They have a specific meaning. When it says closed, it means mass cannot go in and out. When it says rigid, means volume remains constant, okay? So let's say we have a we have a container. So let's say this is a closed container, okay? And in this container, the volume is constant, okay? The pressure is 700 kilopascal. So what's given is pressure. Pressure is given, it is 700 kilopascal, so we know what is the pressure. And the mass of the saturated liquid is 1.78 kg, okay? So what is given? Mass of saturated liquid. So first of all, it is mass, and then it is liquid. 
liquid, saturated liquid. It is given 1.78 kg. And the mass of the saturated vapor is 0.22 kg. So we also have the mass of saturated vapor. So you see here, we have liquid and vapor both inside this container. Okay, so let's say half of the container is vapor and then some part of the container is vapor, some part is liquid. Okay, so this, this is the pressure, the mass of the vapor, the mass of the liquid is known. Okay. Heat is added to the water until the pressure increases to 8 megapascal. So this means that this was the initial pressure. When it says 700 kilopascal, that was the initial pressure. So let's call this P1. And these are also the initial masses, mass of water and ma uh, mass, mass of liquid and mass of vapor. But these are the initial masses. So let's call them also mass of liquid one, mass of vapor one. The final pressure is eight megapascal, means 8,000 kilopascal. So if we, if we come here, so we say that now the pressure is P2, which is given. And this is done after, after you heat. Okay, so we suppose I put a candle here. So we heat it, okay? So uh, heat is added to the water until the pressure increases to eight megapascal. Now find the final temperature enthalpy internal energy of water. So this final condition, what is the temperature enthalpy internal energy? These are the three things that we need to find, okay? So before moving towards, the, let's, let's keep ourselves till this point. Okay, before moving towards the solution of the problem, let's first try to figure out, do we understand the problem statement or not? So we have a container, the container is closed. So whatever the liquid or vapor inside cannot go out, nothing can go in as well into the container. It is rigid. When it says it is rigid, that means it's, it's a fundamental thing here. When, when it says that it is rigid, it means that the volume is constant, it means whatever the initial volume, is the same as the final volume. So V1 will be the same as V2, okay? The pressure is 700 kilopascal and the mass of the saturated liquid is 1.78 kg and the mass of the saturated vapor is 0.22 kg. So we know what is the initial mass of the liquid, mass of vapor and initial pressure, okay? Now heat is added to the water. So what, what will happen when you add heat to the water? Uh, some of the water will try to boil, but uh, the vapors have no place to go. So the vapors is going to occupy the same volume. And so uh, vapors will be compressed. And so the pressure of the vapor as well as the liquid is going to increase. So the pressure is increased from 700 kilopascal to 8,000 kilopascal, which is eight megapascal. And we need to know that what is the final temperature and enthalpy internal energy. Before moving towards the solution of the problem, first of all, do you understand the problem statement? So sir, when uh, we'll be adding heat to mm. the container, mm -hmm. the saturated liquid will decrease and the saturated vapor will increase, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Oh. This is what will happen. So initial condition we was given that this 1.78 kg was the liquid and 0.22 kg was the vapor, but we don't know what is the final condition. We just know this was the initial condition. When you heat it, then the liquid content will decrease and the vapor content will increase. Sure, you're right. Okay. So do you understand the problem statement right now? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's see the solution procedure, okay? The procedure or our plan of solution will be that we need two properties to find out the rest of the property. So we need T2, H2 and U2, but we need two properties for it. We need P2, we know P2, but we need another property. That other property we can use is V2. So the thing is that since we know what is the mass of fluid and ma mass of liquid and mass of vapor, so we can use this to find out, we can use this to find out what is the quality. Okay, so quality is basically what? Quality is the fraction of vapor. So it is the mass of the vapor divided by the total mass. So if we know mass of vapor and mass of liquid, so we can find out the quality. So that means we know X1. So we will use X1.
Hello. Can Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Now we can hear you. Uh, did my voice disappear for some time? Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. So till what was I saying? Till when your voice, my voice was clear? That we know the, the mass of, yeah. That we know the mass of the vapor and the fluid. Yes, we know the mass of the vapor and mass of the fluid. And using the mass of the vapor and the mass of the fluid, what we are going to do is we are going to find out the quality. Quality is basically what? It is the fraction of vapor. So mass of vapor divided by the total mass is going to give us the quality. So this will be initial quality. And this quality and P1, we're going to use this to find out the initial specific volume. And then we say this initial specific volume is the same as the final specific volume because it is a rigid container. So then we know V2 and use this V2 with P2. So we are going to find out T2, H2, and U2. This will be the solution procedure for our question problem. Okay. Do you understand the procedural steps? Yes. Okay. Now let's uh, let's try to solve it ourselves. Okay. This diagram drawn is wrong i'm going to explain it to you why okay so let's have a look at it we have mass of the vapor 0.22 mass of the liquid 1.78 use these values to find out what is the quality initially which will be the mass of the vapor divided by the total mass which will be 0.22 divided by 1.78 plus 0.22 so quality of vapor is 0.11 means 11 percent is the vapor in this mixture till this, till this step everything is clear Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. The next thing is that we need to find out what is the initial specific volume. So we use the quality and P to find out what is the specific volume. Okay. So specific volume will be basically what? So it will be V equals to VF plus, plus X VFG. Right? This will be the formula for specific volume. Okay, X is something we know. So this is 0.11. Okay, so now we need to see what is VF and VFG. Okay, so uh, initial pressure is what? So initial pressure is 700 kilopascal. So we're going to use this 700 kilopascal to find out what is the quality. So let's go into the thermodynamic table. We are going to go into saturated water pressure table because pressure is given. Table A5. Table A5. This is table A5. Okay. So we want to go to pressure 700 kilopascal. Okay, so this is 700 kilopascal. Once again, cross check. This is A5, saturated water pressure table. Pressure is 700 kilopascal. Corresponding to 700 kilopascal, we can see what is Vf, what is Vg. It's okay? Yes, yes. Okay, so now here uh, we know Vf. We know VG. Okay, this VFG is basically what? It is VG minus VF. Okay, so we know VF, we know VG, we know X, we can find what is V1. Is this thing clear? This is step clear or not? Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay, so you see here, this was VF, this was VG. We also find here in this question UF and UG, but it was not needed. So this step is unnecessary waste of time. Okay, so we just find VF and VG and we use this in the formula here and we get V1 is 0 0.0309. Then finding U1, not needed, unnecessary step. Okay, so till this step it is clear or not? 
yes, it's clear. Okay, so in our plan, strategy was that first we use x1 and p1 to find v1. This is what we have done. Then we say v1 is equals to v2. And then we use v2. So we use v2 and p2 to find other properties. Okay, so let's have a look at, now we know v2, okay? And we know p2, so let's go back into the table. Okay, before going back into the table, let's see what was the value. It was 0 0.0309, okay? So let's go into the table against, uh, this is p2 is how much? p2 is 8,000 kilopascals? 8,000, right. This is eight megapascals or 8,000 kilopascals. So we go into the table, 8,000, where is 8,000? Here it is 8,000. 8,000. Against 8,000, check the V values. This is VF, this is VG. And our value was 0 0.0309. So our value was 0 0.039. So check this value against VF and VG. Do you think it is greater than VG? Do you think it is in between them? Do you think it is less than VF? So it's greater than. So it's greater than VG means what? Superheated liquid. Exactly. So that means it is superheated liquid. That means our V2 we cannot find here. So this is the wrong table for the second state. So we need to go into the superheated, okay? Let's go to superheated. This is superheated vapor. Pressure is now in here, it is given in megapascal. So we need to find 8 megapascal. Here is 8 megapascal. This is 8 megapascal. Okay. And our specific volume is 0 0.0309. And okay. So let's see which is the specific volume values. 0 0.02, 0 0.024, 0 0.029, 0 0.034. So our specific volume in, should be in between these two values, 0 0.029 and 0 0.034. Do you agree? Yes. So this means between these two values, we're gonna find the other properties, temperature, of internal energy, enthalpy. These three properties we're going to get from, from here. So if you look here in this question, again, you find the U values, unnecessary step, not needed. Okay, then we say V2 is equals to V1. We go into the superheated region. Then from the superheated region, now we need to do the interpolation. So we have this term, we have this term, and we need to find temperature, internal energy, and enthalpy at a specific volume point 0 0.03099. So when you do the interpolation between uh, temperature and a specific volume, so this is the solution. Temperature comes out to be 361.615. And when you do it for internal energy, this is the answer. When you do it for enthalpy, this is the answer. So our first part of the problem is solved. Is there anything within the solution of the first part of the problem that you do not understand? Please ask. Is the solution clear? Yes, sir, it's clear. I wanted to ask one thing. Uh, sir, super, mm -hmm. in this superheated region, mm -hmm. there are only vapors, right? Yes, only vapors. No liquid at okay. all. Because all the liquid has been uh, converted into vapor. Okay. So first part of the problem is done. Anybody have anything to ask? Anything not clear, please ask. You see here, you can also find the internal energies, but this will be useless. Why? Because in our plan of solution, it does not really help us at all. Okay, so it's just a waste of time. So there is a lot of things, a lot of thermodynamic properties you can get from the thermodynamic tables, but if you keep on getting every property, you're gonna just waste your time. So first thing is always develop a plan. You see here, I developed a plan here, that what we have, what we need to find. And then target your plan 
and get the results that you want to get don't no need to take unnecessary values from the table okay now the second part of the question was that does the liquid level rise or fall what do you think when you heat it obviously in the end it is superheated vapor so all the liquid is gone so liquid level level actually fall make sense yes yes okay the next part is that plot this process on a pv diagram okay the first thing is that if you look here i told you this diagram is wrong because first thing it is not a pv diagram it is a tv diagram so this thing is wrong if you want to plot it on a pv diagram then your y axis should be p and your x axis should be v okay then first you need to put the dome let's say i put the dome here okay then if you look here in this question initially we were in the uh, initially we were in the saturation region with 0.11x and then finally we were in the superheated region okay finally we were in the superheated region okay so first of all the process is a constant volume process because v1 equals to v2 if it is a constant volume process so on a pv diagram it should represent as a vertical line okay and the second thing is that the vertical line should start from the saturation region and should end up in the superheated region okay because our state point 1 is in the saturation region state point 2 is in the superheated region and it should be a vertical line okay so the process is starting from 1 to 2 okay so this is how the on the pv diagram it looks like okay if i draw the constant temperature line here as well the constant temperature line would look like this okay i'm drawing it by pen on this tablet so you know it's very hard to draw properly but it would something look like that okay so these are the constant temperature lines so we don't need to make it to scale right just need to put yeah yeah you don't need to make it to scale but the okay. thing is that uh, it the point should represent correctly now what are the things for you important first of all your state point 1 should be in the saturation region okay this is important so okay. second thing is that your state point 2 should be in the superheated region the third thing is that it's it should be a vertical line because you you, you are going through a constant volume process and that's it if, so, if 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 you take care of these things that's it you have drawn it on a and 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 you should draw it on a pv diagram okay not tv diagram here it was drawn on a tv diagram okay so where you have to do according to what is written in the question here it is written draw it on a pv diagram that's why i said this diagram is wrong is is the solution of this problem clear yes sir it's clear so could you please explain how uh, we do interpolation interpolation okay yeah. let me explain it okay so suppose we have here between temperature and specific volume, or let's let's do it between u and u and specific volume okay so uh, the way i do it is that put an equal to sign here and you have a numerator denominator numerator denominator okay so on on the top numerator the smaller difference smaller difference will be 0.03099 minus 0.029975 so 0.03099 minus 0.2 uh sorry 0.0 2 okay this is the smaller difference divided by bigger difference bigger difference is 0.03099 minus 0.2 sorry 0.030 aha uh -huh. sorry it will be 0.03 
four four minus point zero two nine nine seven five. Uh, this thing is clear on the top side. Uh, yes, yes. Numerator, you need a smaller difference divided by denominator, bigger difference. Okay, and similarly here on the numerator, smaller difference. You know, it's writing for me here is difficult, but the smaller difference. Yes, I understand. This, this unknown value minus two seven four eight point three, and here uh, the bigger difference will be two eight six four point six minus two seven four eight point three. Okay, sir. I get it. Okay, thank you. You get a you you get an equation. You just get the unknown. That's it. anything anybody want to understand anything else okay good okay so this problem is done then we have example 5 very very similar to example 4 uh, but it's like a template here where the values are missing and you're going to fill the values yourself okay so it's empty it's not a homework just practice do it yourself okay so like a template provided to you just fill the values from the tables and everywhere okay so that's it then we have the next topic which is the ideal gas equation of a state uh, let's have a break of 5 minutes and then after that we can start this topic okay sir
Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So let's start the next. Uh, next topic. Uh, sorry. Uh, did anybody say anything? No, so you were just saying that we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, let's uh, start with the next topic, which is the ideal gas equation of a state. Okay, uh, first of all, equation of a state is something that you have studied uh, before in your intermediate education as well, and maybe in some courses within this engineering as well. So equation of a state is basically what you have for any gas. You have three properties, pressure, uh, volume, and uh, temperature and an equation which can relate the three properties of gases here uh, that equation is known as equation of a state normally equation of a state is developed for an ideal gas and uh, uh, this is pv equals to rt now when we say that we develop an equation for an ideal gas and uh, that is pv equals to rt so the next question is that what is an ideal gas now, ideal gas is a gas where, by definition, the molecules of gas are very far away from each other. And so the intermolecular distances between the molecules are too high. And so the intermolecular forces between the molecules is very low. Because when the molecules come closer to each other, then the intermolecular forces becomes strong. So when the molecules are far away from each other, so the intermolecular forces are weak and the distance and the spacing between the molecules is too much okay so if this is the condition then we say this is an ideal gas and it will actually follow the ideal gas equation of a state which is pv equals to rt do you understand the definition of an ideal gas here so but uh, in the in this equation there's also uh, the number of moles right pv equals nrt uh, actually, for the for the ideal gas equation of a state, uh, there are multiple forms of that equation. We're going to come over to that. This is a form which where we are not using volume. This is a specific volume. Okay, so specific volume is uh, uh, meter cube per kg. Okay, so other forms of the equations are PV equals to MRT in in the on the kilogram basis or on the molar basis it is pv equals to nrut okay the only difference is that when it is pv equals to mrt then r is the gas constant for that specific gas however when it is pv equals to nrt nrut then we are going to use the universal gas constant the universal gas constant is same for all the gases okay so there is a difference between universal gas constant and the gas constant for a specific gas Okay, universal gas constant is a fixed value, and uh, R is a gas constant which is going to vary from gas to gas. And you're going to get these values of R and RU from the table A1, where the gas constants are given for all the gases. Okay, now uh, this R, uh, the relationship between R and RU is that R is equal to RU upon M where RU is the universal gas constant, its value in different units is provided here. However, the important value for, for, for us is 8.31447 kilojoule per kilomole Kelvin. Okay, so this is the value for RU. Okay, and the value of R for different gases, if you go into the table, thermodynamic tables, in table A1, the very first table, you see? So you have gas constants, gas constants for different gases. Is provided. Okay, so this was the journal explanation about ideal gas equation of a state. Okay, now the question is that does all the gases behave ideally, or are there any conditions when the when the gas stops behaving ideally, or we say that it deviates from the ideal behavior? So let's try to understand that it's by the definition when we say a, a gas is an ideal gas so our definition is that the molecules are too far away from each other suppose if we develop certain condition that these molecules come closer to each other then the gas will deviate from the ideal behavior and the gas will not remain ideal 
because for an ideal gas the gas molecules should be too far away from each other but if somehow we create a condition when the molecules come closer to each other then in that case the gas will not remain ideal okay so now let's try to figure out let's try to think that what are the conditions when molecules come closer to each other for a gas let's talk about pressure okay let's talk about pressure suppose i have a gas and what i do is that i increase the pressure so what do you think will the molecules come closer to each other or will the molecules go far away from each other when i increase the pressure of the gas they come closer they will come closer to each other when you are increasing the pressure of the gas you are compressing the gas so the molecules will come closer to each other so that means that gas will stop behaving ideally and it will deviate from its ideal behavior understandable logic yes okay next thing is that let's talk about temperature what do you think if i increase the temperature or decrease the temperature which of the thing is going to make the molecules come closer to each other so increasing will make them uh, go far away from go far other. away yeah. because it will expand when the gas expands molecule go far away from each other but when we decrease the temperature when we decrease the temperature the gas contracts and so the molecules will come closer to each other so this means what under two conditions the gas will tends to deviate from the ideal behavior when you increase the pressure and you decrease the temperature these are the two conditions under which the gas will deviate from the ideal behavior why because the molecules will come closer to each other is it clear yes sir is it clear yes okay okay so so let's say if i ask you that what are the factors which uh, causes and a gas to deviate from ideal behavior what are the factors which causes a gas to deviate from its ideal behavior what will be your answer there are two factors if you increase the pressure or if you decrease the temperature these are the two factors which tends to deviate the gas from the ideal behavior now if i if my question is that what is the reason for this deviation the reason for this deviation is that when you increase the pressure or you decrease the temperature the molecules come closer to each other when the molecule comes closer to each other intermolecular spacing becomes less and the intermolecular forces become strong and this deviates the gas from the ideal behavior because now the gas tends to behave more like liquid than gas do you understand the concept here because in yes, liquids in liquids the molecules are closer in gases the molecules should be far away from each other yes sir okay okay so this is uh, something that you need to understand about the ideal gas behavior okay the idea the, the ideal gas equation of the state is only valid for ideal gases so suppose if you have a gas which is at a very high pressure and at a very low temperature then that gas is not going to behave ideally so ideal gas equation of the state is going to predict wrong properties for that gas okay so anyways we are going to see what is the solution for it but let's have a problem here let's solve a problem related here uh, determine the specific volume so we need to find what we need to find a specific volume for r134a at 1 megapascal and 70 degree centigrade so we know the pressure and we know the temperature using ideal gas equation of state so what is ideal gas equation of state pv equals to rt temperature is known pressure is known r because since we know the what is the gas so we know what is r for this gas although r is given in the question here but you can get the r directly from the table as well so if you see here r134a is here this is r134a corresponding to that you can see what is the value of gas constant it's clear so this is the value of r not ru right yes r r this is the okay. value of r okay so r for this specific gas is this much so now you know r you know t you know p you can find what is the specific volume here 
and then you can compare this specific volume with the actual specific volume. It says compare the result with the actual value of 0.024261 meter cube per kg. So let's see how much is the difference. Okay, so we have pressure converted into kilopascal, temperature converted into Kelvin, substitute these values into the ideal gas equation of the state. You get the specific volume. This is the actual specific volume. The difference will be this divided by the, the actual. So the error is about 15.2%. This is too high. 15% error means it's, it's too high, means the pressure for this gas is very high and the temperature for this gas is very low. Okay, so ideal gas equation of the state is predicting a wrong value. Okay, because the gas is not behaving ideally. So now let's see what is the solution. The solution is that we need to modify the ideal gas equation of a state. Okay, so the ideal gas equation of a state says PV equals to uh, PV equals to RT. This is ideal gas equation of a state, which means PV upon RT will be equal to one. According to ideal gas equation of a state, PV upon RT should be equals to one. But here, what we do is that instead of saying it is one, let's say this, we say this equals to Z. And Z, we define it as compressibility factor. Compressibility factor is that a factor which tends to make the molecules come closer to each other. The so compressibility factor, the reason why the gas tends to behave non-ideal is that when the molecules come closer to each other, either because of the increase of the pressure or because of the decrease in the temperature. So that non-ideality can be represented or can be corrected by adding another factor here, which is compressibility factor Z. Now the value of Z could be greater than one, could be less than one, could be equal to one. If it is equal to one, that means it is ideal gas. But if it is not equal to one, if it is greater than one, or if it is less than one, that means this, this is uh, the non-ideal behavior of the gas. This is for the real gas. So our equation becomes PV equals to ZRT, where Z is the compressibility factor, which is equals to one for ideal gas and will not be equal to one for, an, for any other gas, which is not behaving ideally. Do you understand this equation here? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's try to figure out how can we determine the value of Z. Z is the compressibility factor, okay? And let's try to figure out how we can determine the value of Z, okay? So first of all, what will be the unit of Z? Any idea? What will be the unit of Z? So what was your question? What will be the unit of Z, compressibility factor? So it has no unit, I think. No unit, exactly. This is compressibility factor. PV and RT will have the same units, so they will cancel each other. So this compressib compressibility factor has no unit. Okay. So it is just a correction factor to correct the ideal gas equation of a state so that it can match or it can give predict the values for the real gases. Okay, now let's try to see that how can we determine the value of compressibility factor. For this, what we need is the Nelson Obert compressibility, generalized compressibility charts. So we'll have charts like this. Uh, it's also there in your uh, Google Classroom. I have uploaded it. There are three charts here. This is chart one. So this is chart one. Then you have second chart, chart two. Then you have third chart, which is chart three. So three charts here. And what are these? These are Nelson Obert generalized compressibility charts. Let's try to understand one by one what does these chart represent. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the x-axis for this chart. On x-axis, you have reduced pressure. Now, what is reduced pressure? Reduced pressure by definition is pressure divided by critical pressure. So you have a gas and you know what is the pressure of the gas. Just divide that pressure with the critical pressure for that gas. 
Now, where will you get the critical properties? So if you go into the table, in same table, table A1, if you see here, you have critical point properties. You have the temperature and you have the pressure. So critical temperature and critical pressures are given for, uh, for any gas. Okay, so if you have the critical properties, okay, so what you can do is that uh, you can first find out what is the reduced pressure and reduced temperature. So reduced pressure is P upon P critical, reduced temperature is T upon T critical. And then you can also determine what is the pseudo reduced volume, okay. Pseudo reduced volume is V actual divided by V critical, V critical is R, R T critical by P critical. Okay. So this is pseudo reduced uh, volume. Okay, why it is known as pseudo reduced volume? Because it is something that cannot be directly measured. It is just calculated. This uh, reduced pressure and reduced temperature could be directly measured. But reduced uh, uh, volume cannot be directly measured. It is actually calculated and that's why we call it pseudo reduced volume. Okay, so it's, uh, it's PV actual divided by RT critical by P critical. So we have these three parameters. On the x-axis, you have reduced pressure. On the x-axis, you have reduced pressure. And on the z-axis, on the y-axis, you will have the compressibility factor that we need to find out. Okay. Tell me what will be the unit of reduced pressure and reduced temperature. So no unit. No unit, because it is a ratio of pressures or the ratio of temperatures. Okay, now the second thing is that, let's have a look at what is there inside. If you see here, inside this chart, you have two set of lines. One solid lines, and then other the dotted lines. Okay, the solid lines are the reduced temperature values. So you see here, we have a reduced temperature where you have five, then here we have 2.5, 2, 1 1.8, 1.6, 1.5, 4, 1.3, 1.2, 1.15, 1.1, 1.1, 1.051. One. And then you will have the dotted lines. If you see the dotted lines, dotted lines are basically the reduced, pseudo reduced volume. So we have dotted line here like 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 1. Two, three, five. See here. So we have uh, dotted lines are the pseudo reduced uh, volume, and then the solid lines are the reduced temperature. On the x axis, you have reduced pressure. On the y axis, you have the compressibility factor. The thing is that out of these three properties, out of these three properties, uh, uh, reduce pressure, reduce temperature, reduce volume. If you know any of the two properties, you can find the third one. Uh, oh, sorry, you can find out the compressibility factor. If you know any of the two properties out of these three properties, you can find out what is the compressibility factor. Okay. So this is how we determine the compressibility factor. We are going to solve numerical related to it. But let's first talk about three charts. I told you there are three charts here, chart one, chart two, and chart three. So what is the difference between these three charts? First of all, look here, what, what is the x-axis for the chart number three? For chart number three, the x-axis is from zero to 40. Okay, so reduced pressure is from zero to 40. For chart number two, the x-axis is from zero to seven. So if you look here, this chart is very similar to this chart, only the thing is that the ch chart number three is for uh, PR value 0 to 40, but if you want a chart only in this region, from 0 to 7, then you go to chart 2. So chart 2 is like a zoom in. Chart 2 is like a zoom in for uh, chart 3. Is this point clear? Okay, sir. Okay, and look here, chart 3 is from 0 to 7. Let's look at chart one. Chart one is from zero to one. So chart one is basically a zoom in for this region. So if you have a PR value between zero and one, it's better to go to chart one because this is zoom in. Okay. 
and within this chart if you have a value only from 0 to 0.1 so 0 to 0.1 is this region so it's better to to go chart within a chart you have a chart within the chart here which is a zoom in for this region 0 to 0.1 do you understand these three charts what is the differences between them chart number 3 is the generalized from 0 to 40 but you cannot see the values from 0 to 7 because they are too small so it's a zoom in value zoom in chart is chart 2 the within chart 2 which is 0 to 7 if you want to have the value between 0 to 1 then you go to chart 1 and within chart 1 if you want to have a value between 0 to point 1 then you go chart within this chart 1 do you understand this or not is there anything which is not clear please ask everything's clear so far yes sir it's clear yes, sir okay good so let's see the numerical last time we solved this numerical and what was the error the error was 15% let's solve the numerical again same values of pressure and temperature but solve it using the uh, compressibility factor okay so determine the specific volume of r134a at 1 megapascal 70 degree centigrade using generalized compressibility chart compare the result with the actual value of 0.024261 meter cube per kg t critical and t p critical values provided but i told you if you not provided you can directly get from the table uh, table uh, a1 okay so let's have a look here so p value is given t value is given t critical p critical you can get from table a1 so you can find what is t pr and tr pr is 0.2463 tr is 0.9166 so first of all pr value is 0.2463 what do you think which chart should be used chart 1 chart 2 or chart 3 chart um what was the value point 2 the value was point 2463 so it should be chart 1 because chart 1 is from 0 to 1 yeah okay okay now within this chart what was the value uh, the value was point 2463 so let's see 0.2463 let me draw the line at 0.2.1.22.23.24 will be somewhere here let's draw the line what is the line okay so Let's see. Point two four. So point two point two one two 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 three two four. Okay. So I have drawn a line at point two four. So the value was point two four six three. So now let's go to TR values. What is the TR value? Your value is point nine one six six. Let's see. So this is point nine. This is point nine five. So point nine one would be somewhere line like this, very close to here. Okay. So it will be somewhere here. If I draw it, so it will be like this. So this will be the point compressibility factor here. So this is point nine, so point eight nine, point eight eight, or eight seven. So the value would be point eight seven or point eight eight, somewhere in between. Do you understand how I've determined it? So what did the solid lines and the dotted lines represent? Could you repeat? The solid line is TR values. See here. the solid line is the tr values 
Okay, so TR point, uh, point 0.95, point 0.9, point 0.85, point 0.8, and you can go for TR1, TR uh, 1.05, 1.1, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, 1.30, 1.31,
condensation process might occur as the gas converts into liquid it's clear so okay, okay. the the molecules will come closer to each other this is the idea the gas remains ideal when it is too far away from the from the condensation condensation phase when it cannot be converted into liquid when it is still in the vapor phase and the gas molecules are far away from each other that's ideal gas but once you come closer to the saturation region now the molecules come closer to each other okay and so there is right. a possibility then condensation might occur similarly at the critical stage at critical stage when you when you approach the critical stage so this is a point where the saturation region is very small so the gas tends to quickly convert into liquid so this is the region where the the deviation from the ideal gas behaviors occur say okay 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 anything else anybody want to understand okay let's have a break of 5 minutes and then we will start chapter number 4 in the meantime okay. uh, in the meantime in your chat box please write present so that i can have uh, an attendance for you guys okay uh, sir uh, rafi said yes. that slide is gone so can you just mark his attendance rafi uh, who rafi 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 rahman. Rahman. rahman okay i will do it thank you sir you're welcome So let's have a break of 5 minutes and then we will start back.
Assalamu alaikum students, can you hear me? <coughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, let's uh, start with chapter number four. Okay, uh, first of all, this chapter is about uh, closed systems. Application of first law of thermodynamics to closed systems. So let's first write down the, mm, let, let's first write down the equation for the first law of thermodynamics, which we developed in chapter number two. So it was Q minus W plus E mass in minus E mass out is equals to delta U plus delta kinetic energy plus delta potential energy. Remember this formula? <coughs> yes, sir. Okay, if it is for a closed system, so which term will cancel out? So mass in and out. Mass in and out will cancel for closed system. And uh, if it is a stationary system? Work, I think. No, stationary system means it is not moving. So there will be no change in the velocity. And there will be no change in the potential. Oh, energy. Right. So, de so delta kinetic energy and delta potential energy will be zero if it is a stationary. And if it is a closed system, so E mass in, E mass out will be zero. So practically this chapter, chapter number four, uh, is for the application of first law of thermodynamics to the closed and uh, stationary systems. So the main formula for us in this chapter is Q minus W is equals to delta U. It's clear? Yes. Okay, so it's energy analysis of closed systems. Okay, so contents, lesson objectives. Okay, so let's talk about, first of all, the boundary work. Since we're talking about the closed system, so whenever you have closed systems, so most of the time it is a piston cylinder arrangement that you will have, okay? So uh, let's define boundary work. So boundary work is basically what? Suppose if I have a gas, which is my system inside the piston cylinder. Now, if I expand, if I heat the gas, the gas will expand, okay? And the expansion means the piston will move up, okay? If, if I cool the gas, then the gas will contract means the piston will move down, okay? So when the piston is moving up and down, that means some work is being done. When the piston is moving down, that means work is done on the system. When the piston is moving up, that means work is done by the system on the surrounding. Okay, so first of all, how do we define the boundary work? Boundary work is defined as the work done by the boundary. Work done by the boundary. So let's say our gas is in communication, is in contact with the, with the cylinder and the piston. So the boundary of the gas is expanding, moving up or down. So that means some boundary work is being done by the gas. And for work, it is force multiplied by the distance covered. But in case of the gas, the force is because of the pressure. So we can write force as pressure multiplied by the area over which pressure is applied, multiplied by ds. But if you look here, area multiplied by ds is basically the volume displaced. This is the volume displaced, ds multiplied by the area. So we can write here as PdV. So the differential work done by the boundary is PdV. Or if we integrate it from state point one to two, we can get the overall work done. So overall work done is integral of PdV, where dV is the change in the volume. Okay, when, when, when the volume expands, then the work is positive. So work out. So work is done by the system. When it is compressed, so the work is negative. So work is done on the system from the surrounding. Okay. So this is the definition of the moving boundary work uh, for, for, an, for a gas. 
Is this thing clear so far or not? Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay. This is just simply regarding the mathematics. You know, when in mathematics, when you have x axis and y axis, then the area under the curve represents the actually product of the x and y axis. So you have PV, so change in the volume in the x axis. Axis with the with the pressure on the y-axis. If you multiply them together, so the area under the curve will be the actual amount of work done. Okay, so this is just uh, mathematics. Okay, let's talk about work. Since we are talking about work, so first of all, work is not a property, but work depends upon the path which is being used to convert the the the, the properties of the of the pure fluid from state one to two. So we can have two states, same states, and different amount of work could be done to reach those states. So from state one to state two, a process occurred. It might follow a path A one to two by A. It might follow a path B. It might follow path C. In all the three different paths, different work will be done. So work is not a property. Work, dep work depends upon the path followed from state one to state two. But it is not a property itself. The property is at state one. The property is at state two. So he, these are the properties. But work depends upon the path. So it's a path function, not a property function. You will understand this much better when we come over, when we continue with this course. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about different kind of processes. Let's talk about different kind of processes and what would be the amount of work done through those processes. Okay, the first is the constant volume process. Suppose if we have a constant volume process, so in case of the constant volume process, the work done is integral one to two PDV, but since it's a constant volume, so work so the change in volume is zero. Since the change in volume is zero, so what will be the work done for a constant volume process? It will be zero. Make sense? Right, yeah. Okay. Now here, let's go to the last slide. In the last slide, I have put here a summary. So for constant volume process, when the volume is constant, boundary work is equals to zero. Is this thing clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go back. So constant volume process done. Let's move ahead. Constant pressure process. The constant pressure process, what happened is that pressure is constant. So let's go to the formula. Work, boundary work is integral, PDV, but now the pressure is constant. What happens to, to, to pressure if it is constant inside an integral? It's going to come out of the integral. So P is going to come out of the integral. It will become P integral 1 to 2 dV, or it will become P V2 minus V1. So this will be the work done for a constant pressure process. Do you understand this or not? Yes, sir. Makes sense. Okay. So let's go back into the formula sheet. Okay. So second formula. For constant pressure process, instead of writing P is equals to zero, I write here in the format P V power zero equals to constant. It's the same thing because anything power zero is one. So PV power zero is the same as P equals to constant. So it is P V2 minus V1. And suppose if we do not have the volumes, if we have the specific volume, then we have to multiply it with the mass. So mass into pressure into specific volume two minus specific volume one. Do you understand these formulas here? Yes. Okay, anything which is not clear? No, okay. okay, so let's move back. Constant volume done, constant pressure done. Okay, let's go to polytropic process. A polytropic process is a kind of a process where pressure is not constant, 
volume is also not constant but a combination of pressure and volume p v power n is constant so let me repeat and once again polytropic process is a process where neither the pressure is constant nor the volume is constant but the but the product of pressure and volume power n volume power n multiplied by pressure the this product is constant so if a process is following this rule pv power n then this kind of process is known as polytropic process all the real process in the world are polytropic processes all the real process in the world are mostly polytropic processes we're going to discuss more about these kind of processes in the later chapters but right now do you understand this thing what is the difference between polytropic process and constant volume and constant pressure in constant pressure pressure was constant in constant volume volume is constant in polytropic pressure is not constant volume is not constant but their product p v power n is constant is this thing clear ha <coughs> sir see okay now, now 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 let's try to formulate the formula for the work done so work done is equals to integral p dv so p we can write here as c power c divided by v power n or we can write here as c v power minus n or if we integrate it it will become c v power 1 minus n divided by 1 minus 1 if you apply the limits 1 to 2 it will become c v 2 1 minus n minus c v 1 1 minus n divided by 1 minus n now here you have to understand one thing when we say that p v power n equals to c this means p1 v1 power n will be the same as p2 v2 power n okay will be the same as p3 v3 power n so like this so if you have c here i can write this c as p2 v2 power n here and this c as p1 v1 power n just for mathematical manipulation then i will add the v2 with the v2 here i will i will product make a product of v1 and v1 here so it will become p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by 1 minus n so this becomes the work done for the case of a polytropic process is this thing clear or not yes it's clear okay remember one thing when you are draw it on a pv diagram so constant volume process will appear as a vertical line constant pressure process will appear as a horizontal line but polytropic process it will it will not appear as a horizontal it will not appear as a vertical rather it will appear as a curve because when the pressure is changing vol volume is also changing so say for a polytropic process um like we dis discussed a piston if you talk about a piston uh, mm -hmm. if the volume would increase the pressure would increase such that the constant uh, would remain the same right yes yes remains. yes yes so if one parameter will change volume will change automatically pressure will change such oh, that okay. their 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 product remains constant okay perfect your understanding is correct okay so let's come over to the formula sheet once again okay so let's see so for polytropic process pv power n is constant okay so formula for work done boundary work is p2 v2 minus p1 v1 by 1 minus n divided by 1 minus n or if we have a specific volume then m multiplied by p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by 1 minus n do you understand these formulas here yes now 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 have a look at it here if i say that constant pressure process is a kind of a polytropic process with n equals to 0 does it make sense constant pressure process is a kind of a polytropic process with n equals to 0 yes that makes sense that makes sense right this is the reason i write here as pv power 0 equals to constant just try to give you a relationship between constant pressure and polytropic process okay. okay so let's go back polytropic is done 
Concentrate volume, concentrate pressure, polytropic. Okay. Let's go to another case, isothermal process. Now isothermal process is a process where temperature is constant. T is constant, okay? T is constant. This is the meaning of isothermal. Temperature is constant, okay? So we know that P, for ideal gas, PV equals to MRT, right? Now we know that mass is constant, R is a gas constant, and if we say that temperature is constant, so all three things becomes a constant. So that means PV equals to constant. So for an isothermal process, PV equals to constant. Is it clear? No, sir, could you repeat this? Right. We know for an ideal gas, PV equals to MRT. Is it clear? Yes. Now, mass is a constant for, for a closed system. Mass is a constant. Yes. Am I right? And R is a gas constant. T. And for isothermal process, temperature is also constant. Oh, okay. Okay, so constant multiplied by constant multiplied by constant is a constant. Constant, okay. Okay, so that means for an isothermal process, PV equals to constant. Okay, sir. Now, if you look here, isothermal is a special case of polytropic process with n equals to complete my sentence. Isothermal is a special case of polytropic process with n equals to one. One exactly. Okay. So right. let's see here. So for here, P will be equals to MRT upon V. So if you write the boundary work, so boundary work will be integral 1 to 2 PDV. Uh, okay, but P I can write here as MRT upon V. MRT is a constant, it's going to come out of the integral. So it becomes MRT ln V2 over V1. Is this thing clear? Yes, it's clear. Okay, so let's go into the formula sheet. So I, for isothermal process, PV is equal to constant, okay? But that means there is a relationship between isothermal and polytropic as well, because isothermal is a special case of polytropic with N equals to one. Okay, the formula for it is basically what? MRT ln V2 over V1, okay? Now understand here one thing, when we say PV equals to constant, that means P1 V1 will be equals to P2 V2, right? Or, right. or I can say here that P1 upon P2 is equals to V2 upon V1, make sense? Yes. Okay, so instead of V2 upon V1 here, I can also write P1 upon P2. Tick. Tick, and MRT is constant, so that means MRT is equals to P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. So there are six different forms of the formula here. I can write here MRT ln V2 over V1, which is the same as MRT ln P1 over P2, which is the same as instead of MRT, I can write P1 V1 or P2 V2, or here also I can write P1 V1 or P2 V2. So these are six different forms of the same formula. Okay. Okay. So this will be the work done for the case of isothermal process. So do we need to know how to compute these or uh, would we have these in the exam? If, if uh, we no. have them on the campus. Uh, there is a formula sheet. There is a formula sheet provided to you. If you look okay. here in, in the Google Classroom, under textbook, you have the book, then you have another uh, file as formula sheet. Now this formula sheet will be something that will be provided to you in the paper exam. That is the midterm and the final exam, okay? So oh. uh, so you will have only those formulas which are there in the formula sheet with you in the exam, okay? Now, if there is any formula which is not there in the formula sheet, that means you have to memorize it. 
okay all right so you can go through that uh, regarding the quizzes quizzes will be like open book so you can obviously the open book and open lecture slides will be there so you can go through the you have the formulas with you okay sir? yes okay. Uh, sir abdul hadi has message in the group uh, he is having any internet problem so can you excuse us okay okay w what's his name abdul hadi abdul hadi okay i will put him no problem uh so for isothermal process is uh, are these formulas clear, clear to you yes yes sir thank you okay good so let's move ahead so constant pressure done polytropic isothermal also done okay now let's talk about the energy balance okay Uh, look here uh, based on first law of thermodynamics we have the formula here q minus w equals to delta u this formula is for this chapter right now suppose if we have a constant volume process if we have a constant volume process that means there is no change in volume that means there is no boundary work involved am i right for boundary work boundary has to move but if it is constant volume boundary cannot move okay yes. okay so that means for a constant volume process w will be zero so but so this w is in the boundary work right okay this this w is a combination of two things external work and the boundary work yes both okay suppose external work is not there okay 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 so there is only boundary work so what i'm saying is that if it is a close if it is a constant volume process then for constant volume process even the boundary work is also not there so then q will become delta u make sense theek hai theek hai okay so let's come over to the formula sheet for constant volume process q is equals to u2 minus u1 or in the specific internal energy format it will be m u2 minus u1 till till here the formula is clear yes sir okay this part of the formula i will explain later so just leave this part of the formula right now this i will explain later but till here it should be clear for constant volume process q is equals to u2 minus u1 which is m u2 minus u1 okay Okay. Okay. Let's go back there. Okay. Now suppose suppose we have uh, uh, we don't have constant volume process. Suppose we have uh, we have a, a constant pressure process. If we have constant pressure process, then the boundary work will not be zero. Because if we have a constant pressure process, then volume can expand or contract. so boundary work will be there okay and by the by, by the formulas we have determined we have already determined that for the case of uh, for the case of constant pressure process the boundary work will be pv2 minus v1 all right for constant pressure process boundary work will be pv2 minus v1 so if we substitute the value of boundary work as pv2 minus v1 then take it to the other side So it becomes u2 minus u1 plus p v2 minus v1, or we can rearrange it as u2 plus p v2 minus u1 plus p v1. So that becomes h2 minus h1. Suppose no other work was available, then for the case of constant pressure process, q is equals to delta h, or q is equals to m multiplied by delta small h. Is this thing clear? So H does uh, just represents U two plus P V two. Yes, enthalpy, enthalpy. We discuss oh. about enthalpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So for constant pressure process, it is like this because the boundary work here will be this much. If it was constant volume process, then the boundary work will not be there. But for constant pressure process, boundary work will be there. And so it will become delta H, the total amount of heat transfer. for constant pressure process is it clear 
Yes. So let's go back into the formula sheet. So for constant pressure process, Q is equals to H2 minus H1, which is M H2 minus H1. This part of the formula, leave it right now. I will explain it to you later. Okay, so now this is the formula sheet for chapter number four. In this formula sheet, everything should be clear to you except for the last two things here, which I will explain to you later. Is there anything within this formula sheet which is not clear? Okay, good. Now, look here in this formula sheet, we have four formulas for the work done and two formulas for the heat transfer. The heat transfer formulas are for the constant volume and constant pressure. And work done formulas are for constant volume, constant pressure, polytropic, isothermal. Is this thing clear? Yes. Okay, so now there are four problems with you in front of us, in front of you. Okay, I will solve only one problem with you guys. Okay, the rest of the three problems solution is there. One, two, three, four, four. All the all of them solution is there. You can go through it yourself. It's very simple problem. If you just have the formulas in front of you, things become very easy to solve. Okay, with section A, I solve question number two. So don't ask me to solve question number two, other than question number two, because you can watch the video, you can see the solution for two, the way I discussed with section A, right? The videos, okay. the video links, links I'm going to provide you. So now you have three options, question one, three, and four. Select one question which you want out of these three for me to solve with you. One, three, and four. Four. Four, let's do four. Okay, so we have a piston cylinder device that contains 5 kg of refrigerant 134A. So first of all, mass is given, 5 kg. Refrigerant is R134A at 800 kilopascal and 60 degrees centigrade. So we have P1 and we have T1. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, the refrigerant is now cooled at constant pressure. So what kind of process it is? Constant pressure. Constant pressure. Constant pressure. Until it exists as a uh, until it exists as a liquid at 20 degrees centigrade. Okay, so final temperature is given T2. Okay, final temperature is given T2. Determine the amount of heat loss. So what do you want to find? Q or W? Q. Q. Perfect. Determine, determine the amount of heat loss and show the process on a TV diagram with respect to saturation lines. So first of all, it's a constant pressure process and you need to find heat loss. Okay, so let's go to the formula sheet. Constant pressure process, heat loss. Which formula we have to use? Tell me. Six, I think. Six. Constant pressure process and you need to find Q. Is it yes. clear? Okay. And so what is the formula here? Q is equals to H2 minus H1, which is M H2 minus H1. Right? So let's go here. M H2 minus H1. So there's a problem. Okay, I'm gonna write here. F sorry. So Q is equals to M H2 minus H1. M is given. Is it clear? This is yes, 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 sir. Okay, okay. Now we need to find what is H one and H two, right? So first of all, H one for for this we know what is P one and T one. If you have two properties, can you find H one? Yes. Okay, let's do it. So R134A. So let's go to R134A. Okay, we have uh, pressure 800 kilopascal, temperature 60 degrees centigrade. So let's go to pressure table. Okay, 800 kilopascal. Okay, R134A. 
R134 means which table I have to go. Saturated refrigerant R134 pressure table, table A12. Let's go to table A12. Six, table A11, table A12. Okay. So what was the pressure? 800 kilopascal. So let's see where is 800 kilopascal. Kilopascal is here. Clear? So corresponding to 800 kilopascal, what is the temperature? 31.31. Now what is the temperature that we have? 60 degree. So what do you think? 60 degree is greater than 31.31? Or less than? Like greater than. Greater than means what will be the state? Will it be? Superheated. Superheated, of course, because it is greater than saturated. That means we are in the wrong table. Okay. So let's go to superheated. This is superheated refrigerant. Okay. So what was the pressure? Uh, once again, 800 kilopascal means in megapascal, it will be 0.8. Okay. So let's go to 0.8 megapascal, 0.8 megapascal here. That's 0.8 megapascal. Okay. And temperature was 60 degree. Okay. So we can find the we can find the enthalpy. Enthalpy is which column? First, second, third. It's the third column. So enthalpy will be first, second, third. This will be enthalpy. It's clear. So this will be our H2. Oh, sorry, this will be our H1. So our H1 determined. Is this thing clear or not? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Now let's talk about H2. Now H2, for H2, they say that we cool it until it exists as liquid at 20 degree. Okay. So one thing we know that it is liquid, so it might be saturated liquid or it might be compressed liquid. But even if it is compressed liquid, we can use approximation of saturated liquid. You remember, if it is compressed liquid, we, can, we do not need to go to compressed liquid table chart. We can take the value by considering the temperature from the saturation saturated liquid table. So sir, uh, it doesn't matter if it's com compressed liquid or saturated liquid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because okay. we are using an approximation, right? Okay. And, and you know what, you're going to find that you are bound to use approximation because compressed liquid table is not provided for R134A. For the steam, it is there. For R134A, there is no compressed liquid table. So you have no okay. other option but to use the saturated table. Okay, so uh, the temperature is 20 degree. So if we want to find H value, I'm going to get the HF value. As I told you, for compressed liquid table, uh, for, 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 for uh, the approximation is that we use the F value at this temperature. Okay, so let's go to 20 degree. So cause we go to saturation table, saturation temperature table, not the pressure. Temperature table, 20 degree. So this is 20 degree. At 20 degree, we're gonna get the HF value. So this will be HF. So this will be my H2. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, so that's it. Once I have all the values, I can solve it. Let me show it, show the solution to you. Okay, so this was the pressure, this is the temperature. This is the final temperature, okay? So we have, uh, this is the main formula, MH2 minus H1, mass is given. For H1, uh, it will be 296.81. Uh, oh no, sorry, if this is, since we, we, we consider it from, uh, so, so we determined that it has to be uh, the, it has to be the superheated vapor, okay? So, we go into the superheated vapor table and we get the value and it is 296.81. I think it was that. Let's just cross check it. And did it uh, it's 296.81. It was 296.81. Okay. And then for the case of uh, H, uh, for the case of H2, we take it from the compressed liquid state by using the approximation and it is, it is 79.32. Let me cross check it. 
Yes, it was 79.32. Okay, so we just use these values and we get the answer in negative. So this is the amount of heat lost. Now, the, the next thing in the question was that uh, show the process on the TV diagram with respect to saturation lines. So you can look, look at the process on the TV diagram. So first of all, this is a constant uh, pressure process. Okay, so on a TV diagram, it will follow the constant pressure line. So this is how the constant pressure line looks like. Constant pressure line looks like this. Okay, so initially we were in the superheated state. Later on, we are in the compressed liquid state. Okay, and we move through the constant pressure line at a pressure of 600 kilopascal. Uh, so this, uh, this is our state point one. This will be our state point two. And at state point one, the temperature is 60 degrees. State point two, temperature is 20 degrees. Is this thing clear? Yes, sir. So uh, with this, we, uh, if, if anybody have any question, you can ask. Otherwise, I'm going to stop at this point here. OK. Uh, I solved with the section A, solution for question number two. With you guys, solution for question number four. Question number three and question number one, you can go through it yourself. OK, it's very simple. From the question, it's very clear that which formula you have to use, and then you just have to substitute the values taken from the table and put it into the formula and get the result. So there is really nothing difficult in it. So if you have anything you want to ask, you can ask. Otherwise, first thing I, uh, I will again would like to remind your class leader. Class leader is Walid Jamshed, right? Uh, Brother Walid, uh, by tomorrow, yes. if possible, I need to know that what time is suitable for your section as well as for section A. Please communicate with uh, with the class leader for section A, okay? And uh, the second thing is, that's it. Uh, the quiz material will be till chapter number three. Till chapter number three. Chapter four will not be it. It will be till chapter number three. And uh, it will be short quiz, like 10 questions you will have, but short questions. Where, where you have maybe numerical or conceptual questions. Uh, if you just cover the lecture material, okay, that would be enough to solve the quiz without any problem, okay? The practice problems and the videos from the YouTube, these things I provide just for you, uh, for you if you want to practice and get more, uh, more fluent in, in, in this subject, more um, this, this, uh, to develop more understanding of the subject. But it is not compulsory for this course here. Okay, so just the lecture slides are enough for you. If you, if you cover that properly, uh, then inshallah you'll be able to do good in the exams. Okay. okay. Anybody want to ask anything? Uh, I think one of you is going to get the video for this lecture. I don't know whether I will get it or someone else will get it. Okay. So if anybody else get the video for this lecture, just say, please uh, email it to me or send it to me so that I will post, post it on the Google Classroom so that uh, everybody can view it. Sir, if you could stop the recording, we would know uh, who the person is having the recording. Okay. Uh, I can stop the recording. Uh, let me see how. Uh, so, yeah, stop recording. The recording will be saved in Dr. Mauro. This is <laughs> this is gonna come to my Google Drive. Okay, Halas, I, 